Lending for Potential Gain by charging interest has its beginnings in ancient cultures. Early loans and interest were based on agricultural produce. Loans were made in seed grains, plants, animals, tools and land to farmers and specialist workers. That which was loaned had inherent power to generate products and the interest payment was simply a sharing of that result. If seeds and livestock were lent, part of the generated crop and offspring of the livestock would be paid back as interest to the lender. The Sumerians used the word mas to denote both the birthing of calves and interest payments. They used the same word because they saw interest as being a natural byproduct of production. The understanding of interest in the ancient world was simply a sharing of the increase. In this type of arrangement, commonly used in ancient cultures, the loan can be paid back from what the item produces. So what about charging interest on currency itself, rather than the increase of the land? Here is a distinction that is important, as it shows the immense difference between charging interest on produce of the land and charging interest on currency itself. Some of the first recorded problems to do with charging of interest on currency itself was in the Orient, where interest on loans of metal was paid. The Chinese were using metal as currency or money, and the interest was to be paid in more metal. As the practice became widespread, it became apparent that there would never be enough money metal to pay all the interest, and as a result, industry was stalling. This is one of the earliest examples of a society facing the issue of usury, which was understood by most ancient civilizations as an unfair deal for borrowers and ultimately for the entire society. One definition of usury is the act of charging interest on anything that does not naturally reproduce and is a barren or inordinate substance. It requires some other indirect process in order for it to be obtained and it cannot reproduce itself. The royal household, the largest lender and charger of interest, thus sought to moderate the issues associated with lending by setting official prices for key commodities to provide price stability. The royal power periodically institute clean slates where agrarian or farming debts could be forgiven and the lands returned to their original owners, an early form of bankruptcy. Far from being a perfect system, the need for price interventions and agrarian bankruptcy laws does suggest that the practice of usury resulted in a landowner-tenant scenario to be commonplace. Unsustainable debt is a common characteristic in societies where interest is charged on money. In today's society, our banks have become our royal families. We are in debt to the banks for our very livelihoods and as businesses and homes collapse all around the Western world, we must stand up and say enough is enough. This system of usury is driving the West to the point of collapse. Our governments are lackeys to banking interests and they seem to have forgotten who really holds the power at the end of the day. It is time for us to stand against the tyranny of our very financial system and say enough is enough. 
and take the power back.